So ahead of this weekend's return to Premier League football and the visit of Wolves to the London Stadium on Saturday evening, I am delighted to be joined by broadcast journalist Will to get the lowdown on what we can expect from Bruno Large's side. Will, appreciate you taking the time uh, time out to join us, mate. Thanks for having us. I'm looking forward to it. Now, for, for anyone that's a little bit confused by your accent, <laughs> given that you're, uh, you're, you're a Wolves fan, um, but that's not a, a Midlands accent, is it? You're, you've, you're from Sunderland, am I right? That's correct. Yeah, it's a bit of an uh, a bit of an odd one, and one that doesn't come up very often for many people. But um, yeah, it's brought up in Sutherland, born in Sutherland. But my dad's side of the family, all huge Wolves fans. My mum's immediate family, not so much Sutherland fans. Um, so my dad put it on himself, thinking I'm going to be a Wolves fan. First games he took me to were all Wolves. Named me after he claims he named me after Billy Wright. My mum tries to um, argue that <laughs> uh, and stuck from there I suppose when you're when you're so young you don't really have an allegiance to where you're from necessarily it's just mm. you, you know your football team before I had any real identity of where I was from the only thing I could think about was Wolves and um, all my mates loved it people uh, people around Sutherland loved it and uh, we were always worse than Sutherland so it was annoying and then uh, in the last few years it's turned around no, it's turned um, out right in the end then. yeah it's turned out alright um, but obviously always you know there's always keep an eye for, for Sutherland results from um for me, mates, but yeah, it's uh, it's for me, it's for me, family now, uh, my dad in particular. Nice. No, I mean, I suppose most football fans will say that it's because of their dad and the reason why they support their, the yeah. And you know, it, it's not as if I support I support like Man United or Liverpool, like exactly. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't really chasing glory when I chose all the Wanderers, was <laughs> I? No, exactly. That's good. That's good. Good story. Um, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, Wolves season so far, um. Very similar to West Ham's, just one place above us in 17th, uh, two points more than us, but the same amount of goals scored yeah. in three and the same amount of wins with one. So yeah. it sounds like, or it looks like, you're having the same problems as us in that you can't score goals, which ironically means you can't win games. Yeah, it's a problem that we've suffered for a while now as well. Um, it's not just we can't score them as well. We, we never really look like creating many chances and it's a bit of a problem. I mean, last year, we, especially towards, I mean, we've, we've really been, really miss Jimenez. He's never really got back to what he was. And we have been unlucky. He gets injured. Um, we buy a new striker within the first half. He does his ACL. Um, but, you know, there is, it's something, there's something in there that isn't quite right in which we can't score goals. Like, we, we look so good until the final third. It's, it is one of them really frustrating things, which I'm sure is the same with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've looked um, not. I wouldn't go as far as say so good. Um, until well, I, I might be third, pushing but... the ball out there. To be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've had similar problems in that. You know, we've spent a lot of money on a striker, and Moyes um, just barely plays him, gives him twenty minutes at the end of every Premier League game. Um, but yeah, it's it's equally as frustrating for us, particularly given the, the two seasons we've we've we're on the back of. But from Wolf's perspective, it looks as though Bruno Lars is. He's looked to address that, hasn't he? In terms of the striking, you know, three strikers in. I know one of those is um, Hwang, who's, who's joined permanently. But Diego Costa, that must be exciting. Um, and and who's the other striker? Uh, Klasic, Klasic as well. Yeah, so, I mean, he's, he's addressing it, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. We did, really did miss a fork. Also, there's a lot of pressure on him. And when you've got when you've only got one striker and our backup's Fabio Silva, you know, as a young lad, you need somebody who can really think of a focal point. Hmm. And I think um, Klasic offered that. Like I said, he's been injured and it's just one of them things. You can sort of... There is a question of the recruitment, bringing in our... We've needed a striker the whole window to bring him in right on the end of the transfer window. If he got injured, if we got him two weeks early and that happened, we'd have time. Mm. Um, and they've tried to address it by getting D. Hugo Costa in, which has raised a lot of eyebrows. I don't know what make make of that one, really. I, I'm kind of excited. You can go one or a, two ways, can't it? Yeah. Well, we've never had a player of that kind of calibre play for us, really, who's, you know, done it all. Uh, and it could be quite fun, but also he's not played since January. He's 34. I think he scored, like, hardly any goals in the last three years. It, it, might, it might be one of them where he does, like, three great games, scores a hat-trick, gets sent off, and that's all we see of him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll take that. that. I mean, yeah. I, I had to again and pushing the ball out, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it would, it would double your goal scoring tally for, for the yeah, season. So top scorer so. for season <laughs> yeah. three. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But the other two signings, though, will they're the marquee ones, aren't they? And Nunes and, and Guedes is that they're the two that everyone's going caught. You know, particularly Nunes as well. Everyone's going. Well, firstly, no disrespect, but what's he doing at Wolves? Um, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and 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 secondly, like. These are the sort of players that can that can help you get over that 
that problem in the final third. Well, Nunes definitely. Uh, he's uh, what I've noticed about him is he's got everything. He's you know he's big, he's strong, he's powerful, he's great on the ball. Um, mm. But and he's one of the few players in the last couple of games who've, who's got on the end of crosses, like he's run past defenders from the midfield, and that's something that we've really missed. Mm. Um, so I think that's something really positive that we can get out of it. I mean, what is Pep Guardiola called him world class? And if Pep Guardiola is called somebody world class, exactly, yeah, um, you know he's up there and he's he stood out. He's really has stood out. Guedes, I think, is probably a, a bit more of a. I think it's going to take a bit of time for him, um, especially the kind of player they are. You know, you get somebody who's tri- tri- quick and tricky like him from who's never played in the country. It can take them a bit of time to adapt, but it could work out. I, 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 this is there's a lot of murmurs around Lars at the moment. I think there's a lot of Wolves fans starting to get frustrated with him. I th- I'm not sure that's right. I think we need to give him a few more games. I mean, if you look at what we're coming up, we've got you and then we've got Chelsea. I think we've got Forest after that. And, mm. then we're, and our next two home games are Forest and Leicester. Uh, so it, it is, and I've got Palace in between there away. So there's a lot of winnable games coming up. Um, and we really we do need them players to really, re- really, you know, stand up and, and do something, win us a game because nobody really is winning us games at the moment. Yeah, it sounds like it's a very similar situation at West Ham with David Moyes in that, you know, I know Dave, what David Moyes has achieved at West Ham the last two years has been beyond anyone's expectations, probably even his own as well. Mm. Um, but now we've had a bad start, of, even though our expectations going into this season were high. And there are fans that are going, is he really the right man? To, go, to to really take the club forward, and I suppose that was that's kind of that was the question I was going to ask you. In that, do the fans really feel like he's he's the man to? I won't go as far as say replicate what Nuno did, excuse me, but at least get you back, you know, competing at the, at the right at the right end of the table, consistently in the top ten. Obviously, Nuno did what consecutive top seven finishes. Um, is, is he the right man? Uh, I'd like to think so. You know, I'm one of them football fans who loves to try and give the manager a bit of extra time. I don't know what it is. It's, you've got two football fans. Yeah. Some of them like to give the managers extra time. Some of them think let's get rid. And you know, sometimes you're wrong, sometimes you're right. I remember with Nuno, I was good when he went, and I wanted to give him more time. Um, but in hindsight, it was the right thing to do to let him go. Um, so those who in the camp of get rid of him were right. The last one's difficult. Um, I think he can be the right person. To, to, I don't think he'd be the right person to take us up to top seven. We did punch above our weight for a couple of years. We do have to be honest there. Um, and the board have kind of really set ourselves up, set the fans up for a little bit of a dis- disappointment while saying we're going to be in Europe within five, ten years. Mm. But I do think given a bit of time, we do play some good things. Football, what's frustrating is that they, and this probably isn't necessarily his fault because obviously the way football clubs run now, your recruitment is all done by directors of football and so things like that, isn't it? Um, we've we've just not recruited right. I mean, Collins is now suspended for three games. That means we've our backup um, central halves are Totti Gomez and Mascara, who's hardly playing the Premier League. Same as in centre forward. So I don't think he's being helped there, but I don't think he helps himself in terms of changes or become very predictable. And uh, and, you know, we just, we don't, there's something, if you're not scoring goals, it comes from the training ground, doesn't it? And what we do is we start so well. So I, here's my prediction for the weekend. We'll start really well. First half an hour, we'll, we'll create a lot. We'll get in, in the right areas. And then we just invite pressure onto ourselves. And that's where we end up um, not either losing games or almost losing games. We did it against Newcastle. It happened against Spurs. So he, he, he does have to change it around quickly. I mean, we lost three games, the first three games last season, but we looked like we were going to go, go somewhere and he looked quite, it looked quite positive. But it's, I, I don't see it happen, changing straight away. We need a bit of luck. We need a couple of, I mean, we, we, the only way we're going to win is if we win 1-0. So mm. I don't know if he'd be the right guy for top 10, but I don't know who would be. It is hard to say. Like we do have to remember at times that we are Wolverhampton Wanderers. It's what, our fifth season in the Premier League. And then you have a taste of Europe. You really, really you want it more and more and more. Um, we just need a bit of uh, investment. I, I'd like to keep with him. He's, he's, he's managing the top level, but you know, he's, he's with Benfica and they're always in the, the top, the, the European um, competitions, aren't they? Mm. Who, who else could do do it for us at the moment? That's the question. That is the question. I mean, I mean, when people, when fans were talking about David Moyes leaving West Ham, I was going, well, if he does go, then for me, there's an obvious one. That's Grand Potter at Brighton. Yeah. Um, but he's now been taken by Chelsea. So you're right. Mm. I mean, or, or you go, 
Well, Brendan Rodgers is the other Brendan one. Rodgers, but, but then he's like squandering squand- at the bottom of the league, so is he ex- now an attractive proposition? Exactly. Or there's Pochettino, who's a free agent, and um, but that's an ambitious move. He's not. You know, is so, he going to come to a mid-table t- side, so sides exactly. that were mid-table? Exactly. So you're right. Yeah. I mean, in situations like this, um, you're better off not being a Watford and just sacking the manager mm-hmm. for the sake of it. And um, and kind of sticking it out and hoping because you know, he, he was backed in the summer, though, wasn't he? It was 120 odd million quid. Yeah, he was. And the, I've got no, I think with the players we've signed, you know, they do. I mean, Collins has actually looks a good, uh, a good buy. Like we said, Nunes is brilliant. We've signed this new centre midfielder, Traore, who's very highly regarded. Uh, I think the issue is, like I said, depth. I mean, mm. we let Connor Cody go, we let Willie Body go, and, and, um, you know, Sice, Roman Sice left as well, um, including Marshall as well. He went. Now that's three cent halves, and we brought in one, really. Yeah. Now, and we've got then we we'll let then Duncan go, who can mm-hmm. fill in at centre half. That is just doesn't make sense. If we get another injury, we, we're going to struggle, and it's the same up front. So, you know, it doesn't matter what manager you are, if you haven't got the depth and you haven't got the players, you're not going to get the, the results out of them. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. Let's let's look at to, to this weekend then. You've already briefly mentioned how you think it will it how Wolves will will go. Um, I, I look at Wolves as since you came up, was it, was it five years? It was fifth season back. Yeah, you came up years. and you had the you had the better of us for two years. We couldn't score a goal against you for two seasons. You did a double over us for both of those years, yeah. and then suddenly Moyes returned. COVID struck, and we we kind of then decided oh, actually no, we'll beat we'll start scoring goals against Wolves now. Um, but we, but this is the thing. You beat us that four 0 didn't you? That, I mean, that was the one. That, that was the one that kicked it off, I think. And we've, I think we've won three of the last four against you. But I think this is the first time since then that both teams have been in a very similar position. Mm. Um, and with West Ham in a sticky spot as well. I mean, do you think that Leeds should be looking at potentially, you know, taking advantage of some of West Ham's weak points? Of, you know, where do you think you'd be looking at in terms of that? I mean. I th- I th- firstly, I think West Ham have, are suffering a bit from you being hangovers, and I think maybe the yep. postponements maybe have done you a little bit of a favour. Um, we'll see. Yep. Um, where we go, I, th- I think we are best when we got the ball. I really do believe that we can. You, it's just whether we can get in the position to score a goal. So, but then you're very good and very strong at defending against us. We're best I, without the ball. Yeah. Exactly, this is a problem, and you're the types of team who we. Honestly, I do struggle. I do fear a bit. I mean, the way Fulham played against us and the way Newcastle played against us was just be compact, um, and I, we're not really a threat at set pieces either. I mean, I'm talking about this. It's, they've got no up really, have we? Um, but no, I, I, I would. It would be. I mean, it's one of them games where last season I'd have gone. You know what? I'd be happy with a point here because you know they're a good side. Uh, but you look at the table now and you think oh, we should be trying to nick a, a win against these. But at the same time. I think a point I'd be very, very happy with, to be honest, because I do think West Ham, are probably, you are probably just a couple of results away from kicking on. I do think that. Yeah, I mean, Will and I were discussing this earlier on in the podcast in that, you know, some fans would already be calling this a must-win game for West Ham. Others will be going, like Will, will be going, well, you know, it's not a must-win as such, but we could really do with picking up three mm. points. Um, I mean, in, in my book, it is a must-win. I think it's a must-win for both teams. I think um, too. I think I think I, I again. I I always try not to get too far myself. But now the Premier League is just so competitive. Mm. If you lose three or four games, you are in serious serious trouble. Mm. Um, and you know it's Leicester down there. So it's Leicester, West Ham, Wolves. Three teams you'd think would be top half the table. Yeah. You know the teams who've come up. Look, I mean, Forest are struggling, but Fulham look like that they're, they're going to be a good side. Bournemouth surprised a couple of people for the way they started. Now it's not. It's not like if you lose this game, we're going to get relegated. But, you know, there's a period now where we beat Southampton, but we, like I said, we've got you, we've got Leicester, uh, Crystal Palace. If we don't pick up some points, in particular a couple of wins, we are going to be in serious, serious trouble because then all of a sudden you're playing the big teams mm. in which you've got no chance. Yeah, so it's almost like there's three leagues within the Premier League, I think. Yeah. You know? you've, got the, you've got the top six, you've got the, the middle sort of four, and then you've got potentially ten teams that could be in a in a, releg- in a relegation battle every single season. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't, yeah. If you're not competing in the middle of the top ten, then you're in trouble, or you've got the danger of being sucked into trouble quite quickly. And there's always a team or two who look 
you know, the cliche too good to go down. Yeah. And we've we've got to be careful that we're not one of them or both of them <laughs> because yeah, exactly. Everton look like they're improving. Um, yep. I mean Villa. I mean, look, it's what we've got: West Ham, Wolves, Villa, Everton. All really, de- all right, Leicester down there, and they're established mm. Premier League. You'd call them established Premier League sides, wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and you know, Newcastle's takeovers put them right up. So there's yeah. a, there, there is space for big, big teams to struggle now, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we saw it last year with with Everton only just surviving. So uh, anyway, how do? How, what's Moyes thinking going into this game in terms of Wolves' weaknesses? Is, is he is he looking at potential area? Do you think he's looking at potential area to go, right, that's how we beat Wolves this weekend? I think, um, you know, we've not seen much of your new strike, have we? Um, Skamaka, no. Um, you know, I, I would start him, like I said, we're missing Collins, so that we, we're very used to playing three at the back. We've now gone um, three centre-halves. We've now gone two centre-halves. Collins is now suspended. So you're going to have probably Totti Gomez come in. Um, he's good. He's looked solid in back three. You know, a three centre house, a partnership with two, a back four is a completely different prospect. So I would be looking to target definitely here, maybe be a bit physical, maybe a bit direct, which I mm. assume is how you're going to play anyway. Um, I think that our midfield is our strongest place position. Um, we do win a lot of midfield battles. If you can get on top of us in the midfield early doors, it's especially Neves has looked frightening this season. He really has looked unbelievable um, at times. Some of the balls he's playing in, just, just, he's off the ball as well. If you can get on top of us and win the mid- midfield battles, you'll, that's where that's where it'll be won a loss. Midfield battles and then, you know, uh, um, targeting our backup centre-backs. I think that's where the battles are. Good stuff. And... Um... So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I should have warned you about this right at the beginning, Will. But I'm gonna ask you for a score prediction, mate. Oh, can I be really boring and sit on the fence and say nil, nil, <laughs> nil, nil? Well, yeah. well. To be fair, Will's, um, Will's done the exact same thing and gone for Has one he? all. So, um, yeah, I've been a little bit more optimistic and gone two one. Um, yeah. I feel like, I feel like Sat- we have not had a Saturday game for it feels like years because obviously we've been in Europe. Um, so it's nice. I think the fans are going to be buzzing over there on a Saturday evening. Um, mm. And I, I just think you're right what you said earlier that we had the postponed game. We did have the game in between, but then we've had an international break, which I think, I know it's cliche again, but it's come at the right time for us. It's allowed, it's same for us as well, to be fair. It's allowed same Moyes just to, just to reassess things. And I most of these key players have been away, but just to be able to reassess things and try mm. and work out exactly how to approach it moving forward because he's fighting for his job, really. I think. And same with Leisure at Wolves, I would have thought. 100%. And I think both teams really do need a bounce. I mean, we've got yeah. Chelsea away after this. If we don't win that, especially if we don't score again, yeah. there's serious, serious problems there. Um, it's, and I, I'm go, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going. It's the first time I've actually been there in the away end. Uh, uh, nice. Um, over there at the Olympic Stadium. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. With a London Stadium even. But I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully... I would like to see some after that. You know what? I'd, I'd take a draw if it was three three. I really would. <laughs> Just get some goals on the yeah, board. Yeah, be unbelievable, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, but we'll see. We, we could do with a break from it. I think Costa will be on the bench. I do. I don't think he'll start. So a little appearance from him might be exciting as well. Yeah, I, I don't know what his record against us is like, but from memory, my memory's correct. It's um, he, he, he did like playing against us when he was at Chelsea. So um, mm. that might work in your favour. He might be rubbing his hands at the thought of playing West Ham on his Wolves debut. Oh, it's nice to have something, something exciting, an exciting player. You know, it might be he might be past his best, but yep. I'm sure he will bring some sort of headline at some point. Yeah, yeah, good, good stuff. Well, Will, thanks for joining us, mate, and um, hope you enjoy uh, enjoy your first visit to London Stadium. Thank Not too much, much, but I hope yeah. you enjoy <laughs> it. And uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. Good. Yeah, thanks for having me on. In good luck. Nice you hope you still do well. Nice one. Cheers.